But at the same time, I am a bit of a control freak. And yes, I want to be energy independent. What makes it so difficult is cloudy weather. What if you have a week straight of rain and cloudy days and the solar can't charge your batteries back up? Well, you'd be kind of screwed. The only way to get around that would be to have so much extra battery storage, like 10 times as many as you need for those rare occasions when that comes up. One final feature that I really loved about the Franklin system is it can actually tie in to a generator, like a diesel or natural gas propane generator. So if I wanted to be 100% off grid, I would probably get a small generator that I hope to never use, but I could for those rare occasions. Let's talk a little about the settings of how this battery works. Obviously for me being a self-reliance kind of person, I have my Franklin home power system set to self-consumption, where the battery will charge on solar and power your home entirely, as much as it can for as long as it can. But there's also a time of use where you can set the battery to only power your house during really expensive times of the day. For example, if you have time of use billing and you pay more money from 4 to 9 p.m., you can have the battery charge on solar and just stand by and then kick in and power your house during the most expensive times. That is probably the easiest way to save money. Or there's emergency backup mode that charges on sunshine or from the grid as fast as it can to save up energies. Because if you know there's a storm coming or a hurricane or something else, you put it into emergency mode, it'll charge the battery to 100% and just go to standby mode. As soon as the power is affected or the grid goes down, it'll jump in. And then there's a lot of really other cool settings, like there's a storm watch feature where it'll actually listen to broadcast from the weather services and prepare if the power goes down or it could potentially go down. And even though I'm in self-generation mode, meaning it powers my house as much as it can, I still have a 20% buffer, which for me is about eight kilowatt hours of power. I've had the Franklin home power system for about five months now, and it's just been amazing. In fact, I had five outages that I didn't even know about because of how well the system works. Two on August 3rd, one was 11 minutes and one was 12 minutes. I think these were maintenance related from our utility. Then one in October that lasted three minutes and one in November that lasted nine. Honestly, our worst outage though was before the batteries in November, 2022, when we lost power for eight hours. And you never know when it might come back. And that's what drove me to get this system. If we were out without power for eight hours, I'm still paying the employees and we'd have no way to get work done. It's too disruptive to our lives. It's not that ever happened again. That's why we did this. In fact, these last five outages, I didn't even know they happened until I did the data for this video. Here's what those lights look like at night. How cool is that? And uh, see the steam come out of my mouth? It gets cold in San Diego, all right? It's winter. It does get a little bit chilly at night. Okay, right now, my entire house is running on batteries stored from sunshine earlier today. How cool is that, right? So if I were to go turn off the grid right now, nothing would happen because the batteries were already discharging. So you wouldn't notice anything. So let's change the mode to backup only. So now it's just set to backup only. And as soon as I did that, it's pulling from the grid. So let me change the mode again, cause it's preparing to just be ready in the event of, an, of a power outage. Now let's see what happens when we're in emergency backup mode. Right now, the batteries are on, okay? But the house is running on grid currently, all right? So I am gonna disconnect, you ready? I'm seeing, I'm checking for the lights and, you know, inside the garage, those lights up there. Let's see how much of a flicker there is. You ready? Okay. One, two, three. Is that a little bit of a flicker? Maybe a little hair? Do you see much in there? Okay. Now the grid is off. You can see here, it, it tells you there's no grid and we are running the house from the batteries. As I mentioned before, the grid is off currently, but when I turn it back on, it won't just immediately switch back over. It'll wait and monitor and make sure everything's good. Let's see how that looks like right now. Here we go. Grid, ah, back on. Okay, while we wait for the grid to come back online, let me share a couple of other things that I noticed about the battery. Now, if the power were to go out and the batteries were entirely full, the solar panels would be turned off. What it does is it waits for the battery to discharge to about 90% before taking incoming solar input. First thing I noticed. So when the batteries are full to prevent any overloading or overcharging, it doesn't take any more solar input until after it drops down about 90%. The second thing is really cool is we tested it out, ran the batteries all the way down, turn them back on, and yes, the solar panels fired up around 
around 7 a.m. and started charging it back up again. This thing I have not thought about. Yes, I'm a data nerd. I've looked at the numbers and stuff, but this doesn't require any intervention at all. It just works. We've mentioned five power outages, testing, software updates, all this stuff, and it's just been bulletproof. We put about 10 minutes and the grid is re instated. So like we mentioned, that's a little safety feature. It does all that behind the scenes. You don't have to worry about it, but it will detect the grid and come back online in about 10 minutes. 